Hello, my name is Professor Kieran O'Keefe and I'm Head of School of Human and Social Sciences based at Buckinghamshire New University. The school itself covers a number of different subjects including psychology, education, social science and sports science and therapy. Crucially, however, it also covers courses in criminology and forensic or criminal psychology. For this particular course, I'm going to be focusing on how you deal with offenders. And this takes two particular um, paths, either a punishment path or a rehabilitation path. So for the first part, I'll be focusing on punishment, which is looking at effectively custodial aims and the psychological effect of those custodial aims, but also looking at recidivism and reoffending generally. The second part is focused more on the rehabilitative part, so the more positive aspects of dealing with offenders. And I'll be covering a number of different approaches to rehabilitation, which include behaviour modification, anger management, and also restorative justice. For the first lecture, I'd like to focus on the punitive aspects of dealing with offenders, i.e. the punishment aspect. And I'll be thinking about the custodial aims, the psychological effect of those custodial aims, and also potentially the impact of those custodial aims on reoffending and recidivism. So first of all, let's talk about definitions. Let's be clear what we're talking about. So custodial sentencing is when an individual spends time in prison or another institution as a punishment for their crime. When I say another institution, of course, they could be incarcerated in a special hospital as opposed to a prison. And also we refer to prisons for young people as young offenders institutes. There are generally regarded as four custodial aims. The main ones being deterrence, incapacitation, retribution and rehabilitation. Deterrence is the idea that being in prison should be an unpleasant experience. So it should put off the offender from convicting a crime in the future and should put off would-be criminals from committing crimes in the first place. Effectively trying to set an example of others so that would-be criminals see that example, they see the punishment and they're put off from committing further crime. This is based on the behaviourist idea of operant conditioning, is that punishment aspect. Incapacitation refers to the individual being taken out of society as they are a danger to the public, for example, a serial killer. This is particularly relevant where you have individuals who are considered beyond the possibility of rehabilitation. In kind of anecdotal conversations that I've had with other forensic psychologists, whilst we all recognise that individuals have the potential for change and therefore rehabilitation is a positive way of implementing that change, we also recognise that for some small percentage of individuals there may not be the opportunity or capacity for change. And you'll see in some literature discussion about psychopaths not having that capacity to change. So therefore it's about incapacitation of such individuals, taking them out of society to protect the public. Another custodial aim is retribution. So making the individual suffer in some way so they are seen to be paying for their crime. And underlying this is the seriousness of the crime should be matched to an appropriately serious sentence, such as a prison sentence of several years, depending, of course, on the crime. This idea of retribution, whilst it's one of the four main aims of um, uh, custody, actually retribution is something that is part of um, a lot of the public narrative, this idea that um, crime should have a punishment and so therefore the criminal should pay in some way and fundamentally when you think about what's happening in a prison environment they're having their freedom taken away and that's seen as the retributive aspect of being in prison. Lastly is rehabilitation and the definition of this is kind of reforming the offender's character so that they do not re-offend 
and this could be done through training and education inside of the prison and or through forms of therapy or counselling or even particular programmes or training that happen after prison in the probation area. When we're talking about custodial sentencing and these custodial aims, specifically the first three, which we could regard as the, the, the more negative aspects of custodial aims, there are a number of different psychological effects. The main psychological effects of custodial sentencing on those incarcerated individuals include stress and depression. This is very clearly shown through much higher suicide and self-harm rates than in the general population. Another effect is something called institutionalization, meaning that prisoners become accustomed to the prison way of life, making it hard for them to adjust to living on the outside. In some of my conversations with individuals that have been going in and out of prison, I frequently hear that they describe the prison experience as actually being a situation where at least they have a bed and they have three meals a day. Whereas if they're out in the real world, because of for a number of different reasons, they may go back into criminal behaviour, but they may also be in an actual environment where they may struggle to get those three meals a day and even struggle to have a warm bed. So we need to be aware of that institutionalisation that, that individuals going into such an environment can start to become accustomed to that way of life. It's almost as though they're given a routine, they don't need to effectively think for themselves, everything is provided for themselves even though freedom is taken away. Similarly, prisonisation refers to the adoption of an inmate code, if you will, whereby certain behaviours usually seen as unacceptable are rewarded in the institution. This would not be the case for all prisons, but certainly in some prisons you might actually see the kind of antisocial behaviour that would be unacceptable out in the real world seen as acceptable in the institution. Do also be aware that as you look through some of the forensic and criminal psychology literature, you will see referred to the word not just prisonization, but prisonerization, a similar sounding word, but this refers to the psychological effects on the individual as they go into the prison. The very fact that they might have already existing underlying mental health concerns or issues that can be exacerbated when they go into that environment but also the very fact that mental health issues can arise simply by walking into that environment. And quite crucially, staff within a prison establishment are 100% aware that those first few nights in such a prison, especially for a first-time offender, can be crucial in terms of making sure that that individual is safe and also that they have the right transition into the prison environment. There's lots of evidence for the psychological effects. So the Prison Reform Trust, for example, in 2014, found that 25% of women and 15% of men in prison reported signs of psychosis, supporting that custodial sentencing causes stress and depression, and suggesting that it may not be suitable for psychologically vulnerable individuals. Davis and Raymond in 2000, Similarly, concluded that prisons do little to rehabilitate or deter offenders, and that despite this, government ministers often exaggerate the benefits of custodial sentencing to appear to be tough on crime. This weakens the use of prisons and similar institutions as an effective way of dealing with offending behaviour. And related to this is the concept of is the prison effective? Prison staff will talk about the effectiveness of the prison if they don't see an inmate again. They don't see that person again. The assumption is that they have not committed criminal behaviour and they have not come back into the prison, effectively saying they have not re-offended. So when we look at the effect of custodial sentencing, we're also wanting to look at reoffending rates or something that we call recidivism. Recidivism refers to reoffending. 
In 2013, it was found that 57% of offenders in the UK will re-offend within one year of release from an institution, and some studies have shown figures as high as 70%. It illustrates what we call the revolving door issue. People go into prison, they're not reformed or rehabilitated, they leave prison and commit criminal behaviour again. So what I've done in this lecture is highlighted for you how we deal with offenders in a punitive way, looking at custodial sentencing, the psychological effects and the impact of being in such a prison environment. For the next lecture, I'll also talk about dealing with offenders, but from a rehabilitation perspective.